Hello, Mark here. Welcome to RC Hacker. ESCs, do they produce RF noise? Let's have a look. Right, here's the setup. We've got an ESC here, RF Explorer here, camera to film the RF Explorer. The camera does not produce any RF noise. I've already tested that. And we will turn the ESC on. Okay, so I'm going to power up the ESC. Uh, I've also got a 2.4 gigahertz uh, transmitter on here as well. And if we power it up, bang, you can see that spike go up and it is right on 431 uh, megahertz there, which is not really that good. Now, my initial idea with this video was to run the ASC and see how much noise it would produce. But I found that as soon as I plugged the thing in, it would produce noise. Um, if I turn the radio on over here, and uh, hopefully that ESC will start up, and then we run it. That amount of um, throttle doesn't really change the noise that's being produced, even though the wires here quite close to the antenna there now i thought all right let's start eliminating things to figure out what's going on so i'll turn off the radio i'll unplug the receiver still no change and i i can move this lead around it changes a little bit and also i'll even desolder the the um, leads going to the motor just to make sure that's not producing any significant noise there. So there, desoldered, and if anything, it's gone up a bit. So I'm not sure why this is producing that noise. It's uh, very curious. It's the stock firmware on this. So what I'll do next, I'm going to flash this with the Simon K firmware which I normally use and we'll see if that makes a difference right just to be sure everything um, all, I, all that unsoldered and everything like that and I remove power the noise spike is gone apply power noise spike is there there's actually two there's one um, just to the left as well of that main 431 megahertz spike oh, there's a small one to the right there as well it's interesting all right, so let's flash Simon K firmware. Now, I like using uh, this little flashing tool on these type of ESCs, and no soldering required. All I need to do is uh, cut away a little bit of the covering heat shrink, so I can put that flash tool on there. If you can see the USB ASP programmer there, and I'm gonna flash this with the BS NFET firmware, Simon K, uh, 2014 -0618, and I'm flashing this with the KK Multicopter flash tool. So I hold that down on there. It's a bit tricky to get this thing to hold down. Hopefully I've got that there, and then I should just be able to go run. writing apologies for the cold and done so i can remove that so much easier with that little tool and uh it is still powered on so i'll just recycle that power it on again we still have that noise spike, even though we've flashed it with uh, the Simon K firmware. So for me, that indicates this is related to the actual clock that's on this little board, like the actual clock speed that the 18 mega eight on, on board there is running at. So I'm just gonna hook this up, the propellers and everything, and we'll run, run it up to speed again, see if there's any difference. 
let's um just quickly do the calibration so i've got a full throttle all right that's our simon k calibrated um interestingly enough that spike seems a bit lower You can already feel the difference in the throttle response. It's quite amazing. Um, now, what happened? All right, when I unplug that lead and put that lead over there, back where it was when we did our first measurement, it was something like this. It was all upside down. That spikes back again. So I'll power off the ESC and I'll power it on. So it seems if I move this servo lead, whether it's plugged in to my um, receiver or not, that's where the noise is coming from. If it's plugged in, it's not quite an issue such an issue although it is still present all right let's do what some ESCs come with and they come with a little RF um, choke on this actual servo lead so let's let's try that out hopefully you can see that there I've put the little uh, little ferrite uh, annular ring there and I've wrapped this around twice in a hope to reduce the noise and we'll just apply our power and see if it makes a difference not a lot a little bit I think but uh, there's still that little spike there I'll plug the receiver in so it's sort of grounded seems plugging the receiver in reduces it a fair amount but it's still it's still there it's still present now if you're doing really extreme um, FPV work or something like that and I've got a multi-rotor that's got 12 of these little suckers on it it could make a difference to what your receiver on your aircraft is um, able to distinguish a signal and not signal all right so that's just sitting there we've got the um, little ferrite uh, toroid on there and it's wound around a couple of times and there's still a noise spike on there if I move this servo lead around you can see an immediate change there um, you know we're fairly close we're not we don't we're not as super close as we were with the Mobius tests so that's outputting quite a bit there now if I've got 12 of these which I do on one of my multi rotors you know that's going to compound the effect even more so I'm actually quite concerned about this uh, little noise spike if I'm going to be doing long range with a multi rotor okay so let's unplug this lead entirely and see if that makes a difference I'll just just say just turn the power off again and you can see that spike go down Okay, I've just desoldered one of the leads, which is actually the signal lead. And look at that, no spike. Now, I wonder if I can do this without shortening anything out. If I just... Um... So what I'm doing now is I'm applying the signal lead back onto the panel there and you can see that puts out a bit of RF noise there which I find really really quite fascinating so that is actually a digital input or it could be configured as an analog input I've got to have a look at the circuit diagrams and that sort of thing but it's amazing that even though this is configured as an input it's um, producing a bit of noise there so we've found our culprit it's not necessarily the uh, 
the power or ground wires, it's just the fact that that signal wire there is causing RF noise. All right, so what I'll do, just to confirm it, I'm gonna put a bit of wire on here. That's about, um, you know, that sort of wavelength. Just rough, and we'll, and we'll see if that noise spike comes back up again. It's all powered off, and I've soldered this piece of wire uh, directly to that um, input pin on the ESC, and we'll turn them on again. It comes up a little bit. Well, if I put it right over the antenna, there you go. Look at that. If I put that on the actual antenna of the RF Explorer, that spike is, you know, it's definitely, definitely there. Let's just, uh, right, let's, we'll just shorten this a bit. This is one of my good leads, but let's see if that changes at all. It's con up a little bit. I'll shorten it a bit more here. You see, as soon as I shortened that, it went right down. Um, maybe that length was a multiple of the uh, UHF wavelength. I'll just shorten it again, and it's down again. I didn't show that this in this video, but I did test against the GPS frequencies as well, and it didn't seem to produce anything at all. That was nice and nice and quiet. All right, in summary, it seems that our little 12 amp uh, Hobby King or Mystery ESCs seem to produce a little bit of noise on that signal line. Now, the solution to that I guess could be as simple as twisting those lines. Uh, that'll reduce your noise. A lot of people say to do that as well. Uh, that little RF choke made a bit of a difference, but it didn't seem to make a huge difference on there. I tend to remove those anyway, just because they're bulky and they weigh a bit. So I'd probably, uh, in my future designs, I'm gonna twist those wires. Now on this multi-rotor here, I've got 12 of those ESCs. So the fact that that noise is there is a, a little bit of a concern. Now, why is it producing that noise? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we noticed when I dis disconnected the receiver, that noise even increased a bit. So that tells me that that noise is coming from the actual 18 mega 8 chip itself. Now, maybe there's some sort of internal process in there that's ticking away at quite a few megahertz probably close to 431 megahertz or a multiple of and that internal process is um, pulling that line to see whether there's a high or a low on that line because it is being used as a digital input um, maybe the analog to digital converter in, inside as well runs it runs at that frequency now the 18 mega 8 data sheet does say that if you've got any unused pins you should ground them to avoid noise and interference and that sort of thing. So the fact that that was quite long and ungrounded may, may have been the cause of that. Now, uh, 433 is an ISM band, so you're allowed, devices are allowed to produce a little bit of noise on, um, on that frequency. So you can imagine when they were designing the 18 mega eight that, that they're like, okay, we've got this uh, little process inside that's gonna produce a little bit of noise, we might as well produce it on the ISM band, which is unfortunate for us, so we're using that ISM band for control of these devices. But um, maybe that's localized there, and it was very, very specific, which was interesting. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I'm gonna to put together an RF Explorer playlist, and it is a really, really useful tool links below if you want to know where to get them and support my work, that sort of thing. Um, this is uh, currently still a work in process. I've flown it quite a few times, but I'm still improving, improving it. It's a uh, evolution of my, my first mini tricopters and then the Sidewinder and that sort of thing. Really cool, lots of small motors. 
nine small motors and it's very stable. It doesn't need any sort of anti-vibration or anything like that on the camera because of the smaller motors. But uh, that's another video topic. I will get onto this. I'm currently re redesigning it. So it's got the Open LRS on board and now 2.4 gigahertz uh, FPV and uh, room for the Mobius cameras on the front here with a little t tilting mechanism on the front as well. So this is still a work in progress. It's survived a few crashes as well. Anyway, that's future video. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time. Any questions, uh, comments, please in the comments below. Cheers. I could sit on the front. I think it comes off. There we go. So that's our radio module.